I love this view of the garden. Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. So I thought I would bring you on a tour of my garden right now. It is looking amazing. Everything is full, it's leafed out, it's growing strong, and uh, I'm just looking forward to lots of harvest in the next, uh, coming along in the next few weeks here. So I've already started to get a little bit of food out of here, um, but it's only gonna build and get uh, stronger production um, as the summer goes on. So let's have a look at what's growing here and uh, how things are doing. I thought we'd start right here, the entrance to my main garden, my original garden space. Um, we're right outside my shed and we're right beside my strawberry patch. Now, um, I've been getting strawberries off of here for a little over a week, maybe two weeks now. Um, they were looking really good probably about two weeks ago and I didn't have the netting on yet. I was watching robins carry away the, uh, the white strawberries before they'd even, you know, really turned pink to red. So uh, I have some netting on there now and I've been coming in almost every morning and I can pick just some beautiful strawberries out of here. Some are larger than this, some are smaller, but they're all delicious. This is one of my favorite things about coming to the garden. It's just getting to snack on all the wonderful things I'm growing. So these strawberries, I couldn't even begin to tell you what variety they are. I've purchased some plants over the years just randomly and popped them in here. I've taken starts from my parents' yard and I pretty much just let the runners go later in the season um, and I'll try to trim the plants back to one or two strong runners and um, see what comes out of it the following spring. I quite often seem to have this front patch here looking like there's not much going. I'm not sure what it is about that little area if there's just not as much water there or what it is um, but the rest always seems to grow really strong for me and other than having a little bit of a uh, weeping drip line on here I don't really do anything for them. I don't fertilize them. They have a, a cocoa coir mulch down on them um, and uh, they were built from a, just some peat moss. Uh, the soil was built up with some just peat moss garden soil and um, when I emptied out my worm bins when I was done with the whole vermicomposter thing that all went in here. Um, that's what they've been growing in and thriving in for years. Behind them is my rhubarb. Next to that, I have a little experiment going this year. So I have three black pots here. These are old uh, tree cans. In the front one, I have melons. This one is the French Charente, and this one is the, oh yeah, Minnesota Midget. I can't even remember, it's been so long since I planted them. So I've never successfully grown either of these uh, crops, but uh, I'm trying again this year. I'm hoping that the dark pots help to uh, absorb a lot of heat. I have some mulch on there. I have a little weeping line um, put through all of these so they're getting consistent water. This here is my uh, black diamond watermelon and uh, it's growing strong and same thing, I've never actually successfully grown one, but I would really like to, to see that change this year. And in here I have the, uh, the early Canadian. Again, I have been able to get the early Canadian to grow for me. Um, I don't think I've ever had one fully ripen for me yet. So I'm really hoping that I can get some melons out of these. Um, I had, you can see this hot cap. I had them on all of these um, up till yesterday, I think it was. I pulled it off of these two because these plants are just rubbing up against the sides. It's quite moist and I was worried they're gonna, um, start to get some 
issues, fungal issues or something with that. Um, but they seem to really have liked that. Um, even through, we had like 35, 37 Celsius, um, and they were just thriving in there. I was worried it was gonna cook them, but they just, they didn't seem to wilt back, nothing. They were just very happy in that space, um, even with the sun shining right on there. So I had left them on as long as I thought I could, and um, they've been really happy like that. Yesterday was a little bit overcast like this, uh, so like I said, they were a little moist in there, so I took the two off and thought that was a good day where it was a little bit overcast and it wasn't too windy, so let them acclimate a little bit after being enclosed. But uh, we'll see. This is going to be a real jungle mess if these plants um, get growing really well for me, but I thought it'd be a fun thing to try, so we'll give it a shot. This is what I refer to as uh, my garden bed number two. And um, I have some sugar snap peas that I planted back here, um, I believe in late March, early April. And uh, I also planted one row of carrots, um, sweetness, at that same time. They just kind of sat for a long time. We had um, a lot of cold, even for our area, it was extra cold then. And um, then we had some really strong heat and then cold again. It was kind of a wacky spring. So they just kind of sat for a while, but uh, then uh, just when I thought they were, they were not gonna grow, all of a sudden they were both up and, and growing nicely. So I like the sugar snap there. A great pea. These are starting to get a little bit older now. They're kind of getting towards shelling, but they have a, a skin that you can eat. And like I said, they're getting a little bit tough now, but they're really nice pea and they're, they're coming along nicely. It's a little bit shadier back here, so they're not producing um, a ton, but they're giving me something. I had planned to have these only here for you know a couple of months and have them pulled out by now, but because of the crazy weather and the delay and they're growing, they're, they're taking a bit to get going here. Um, and like I said, this is the sweetness carrots and they're just, just starting to produce, you know, a, an edible size carrot, but certainly not a full size carrot. So um, I have been pulling the odd one and just taking them in for the family to enjoy a nice fresh carrot from the garden. Um, but we'll try and leave these and, and let them get a little bit larger. They're a nice carrot. I also have a row of Nats, Toucan I think it's called in here, and a row of Chantenay carrots. And then I also have some celery in here. And uh, it's getting to be really nice size and I've been picking off of it and we've been eating this as well. So it's uh, a two by eight foot bed and it's full of production, so that's nice. It's full of mosquitoes too. Oh, and I forgot to mention there is a Casper pumpkin that I just stuck at the end of that other bed that we just looked at. Um, I think it's getting a little bit shaded. I'm not sure how well it's going to do, but it's in there. Now I have what I call my bed one and one and a half because I added in a section between one and two and they're full of potatoes. I think I have eight varieties of potato in here. French fingerling, binti, road irstiline, omarosa, viking, sangre, there should be some green mountain in here somewhere. Norland, I know that. So I'm not sure what that added up to, but uh, there's, there's a, a good variety of potatoes in here and most of them have flowered so far. They're putting on lots of top growth and uh, I'm very help, hopeful that they're, they're uh, putting on a lot of bottom growth as well. So these are all potatoes that I ordered, seed potatoes. This. Um, this winter so the all of these are are uh, fresh seed potatoes so hopefully they do really well 
Um, in the bed beside me, I have Red Norland. It's a mixture of um, half of fresh seed potato that I ordered and then some saved seed potatoes uh, that I had overwintered from the year before. So here's all my, uh, my bed of Norlands here. Um, so far I've been lucky in this garden and I haven't had any sign of potato beetle. That was something that I really struggled with in my old garden and I'm really happy not to have it here. I'm sure one day I will, but so far I've been able to, uh, to not have it show up. Up. Let's return from the potatoes. So here's my tomato bed. Um, I've been busy pruning in here. Um, I have some onions planted in here as well. There's even a small little baby Pam pumpkin at the back. Again, it's getting a little bit of shade, um, but it sh that should turn around now as I've started to uh, prune my tomatoes up. So that first uh, truss of flowers and fruit, so there's going to be a lot more sun and, and uh, air getting through underneath the plants. Um, I'm constantly out here pinching off suckers and, uh, and staking up the staking tomatoes and trying to contain some, some sort of order to the, the bush tomatoes here. I've also added some fresh mulch with grass clippings. Um, that's something I really like to use to mulch my plants. So lots of grass clippings in this area just to help keep those roots cool. And uh, as they break down, they, they help to build up the soil for, for later years. Uh, this is my garlic bed. And um, it's really, it seems to me like it's ahead of schedule. I'm sure it was the end of July last year that I harvested my garlic and I'm pretty sure I'll be harvesting this stuff in the next week or so. I am already starting to get dried leaves. I've been cutting off, I have a few scapes left here, but um, I've been going through and cutting off a lot of the scapes. The theory is that uh, the scape, which is producing the flower on the plant, is taking energy away from the, uh, the garlic bulb filling out and producing a large bulb. So uh, the general consensus is you should cut these off they are delicious, they're great in stir fries, um, chopped up into salads. I made a lovely little bundle, um, put them on the barbecue with some chopped um, Hungarian hot wax peppers the other night and then I just uh, kind of steamed them away on the barbecue and put them on top of my um, hamburger. That was delicious. Um, but yeah, they're they're getting um, to the point where they're ready to harvest. I have them planted really tightly packed in here. Um, I had estimated from the weight of the garlic I had ordered um, how many bulbs I would have and I was completely wrong so I I just pack, packed them all in here anyways. I maybe should have put some in a different bed or something but um, so I'm not sure how big the bulbs are gonna get but hopefully they do well and uh, it won't be long till we find out. There's three varieties in here, and I can't remember offhand. I'll try and look it up, put it on the screen for you. There's also some beautiful zinnias in here that are flowering. I've been cutting them to take in the house. Um, Benary's giant, I think, is what's in here. And marigolds in the front. So, um, Across the aisle from the garlic bed, I have a bed that's another real mishmash of things. So I have some corn here. I believe this is espresso corn. I grew it for the first time last year. Absolutely loved it. A nice sweet corn and it grew and produced really well for me. So I'm hoping that it does the same this year. Um, and then I have this squash in here. Um, it's an acorn squash. I can't quite remember the name again. Um, I'll pop that up on the screen for you. But it has just, in the last week, started to really vine out and uh, get going here. The corn, too, has just taken off in the last couple of weeks. So these are doing really well. There's a little bit of um, a few onions planted at the back, just a handful that I just popped in here when I ran out of room somewhere else. There's marigolds and celery across the front. There's some zinnias down the middle. And on the other side, I have a couple of squash and pumpkins. So I'll give you a look at those. 
So this was supposed to have two pumpkin, two, two squash and two pumpkins. But the uh, ones I put, uh, I can't remember, I think these are the ones I put in from s seed. Didn't produce and the ones that I put in from sets did. I forget, I did seeds and sets anyways and some, some worked out and some didn't. Hmm, what kind of little beetle are you? Um, anyway, so I think that'll be okay. This was going to be a pretty packed bed and, and uh, I think it'll be all right to not have too, too many things going on. Um, but this is the celebration squash. It's a winter squash. And over here I have the new rocket pumpkin, which I've grown before. And it's a really nice uh, pumpkin. It's, it's great for carving. Um, and if I get enough, then I'll, I'll try and cook a few up as well. I have the baby Pam for pies, so hopefully it takes off and I can use that for pie. So just scooching over to the other side of the, the space here, I have um, my next bed. Um, and this one has cucumbers. So I have one, two, three, four kinds of cucumbers. I have, um, this is Babylon. And this is... Uh, a Parisian gherkin patio baby. I've grown this one before. I really, really like it. It did not grow well for me last year, so I'm hoping I can get it to grow again this year because it's a really nice little pickle. Great for just um, munching on and uh, good for pickling as well. And then here is my quarantine. And I think I didn't do well, my, my cucumbers didn't do well last year, um, but I think this is one of the ones that I did get a few cucumbers off of, and it was a pretty nice cucumber, so hoping to get some more this year. They're really, they're looking like they're doing pretty well this year. They're growing some nice big leaves. They're starting to vine up the trellis, and uh, they seem to like this space. I'm hoping having the, the corn on the one side and uh, then I have some pole beans and s larger squash and things on the other side. It should give them some protection from the wind, but still hopefully get enough um, good morning sun and a little bit of afternoon sun um, to keep them growing and producing. There is a row of parsnips tucked right in behind them. And uh, parsnips are those plants, so you just kind of plant them and, and let them go. I don't do a lot with them after that, so I've just kind of stuck them down the middle here, and by the time I'm ready to harvest them, everything else should hopefully be out of the way. There's a little bit of alyssum and marigolds in uh, the front of this bed. And then I'll just take you around. Over here I have the pole beans that I mentioned and the squash that I mentioned. So I have, um, I think it's called gold rush, rush zucchini here. And this is uh, this is um, a squash. I bought a pack of seeds from I think it was Vessi's. It was called Summer Surprise Mix, and it's um, from what I understand, all types, just different types of zucchini. And I have two plants going here, um, so I'm not sure what I'll get out of those. What type of zucchini they'll be, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. And then behind me, I have a dark green zucchini. So a good mix of zucchini. <clears throat> Again, last year my zucchini did not do well. I've never had that before. So I'm really hoping that uh, that was a one-off year because I really missed the zucchini more than I thought I would. So hopefully I get lots this year. I'm trying pole beans for the first time this year. I have a purple pole bean here. Um, and I ordered them just from a little, a small seed company, seed grower um, in Saskatchewan here. And uh, they just came labeled purple pole beans. So I don't know really what the variety is. Um, and this one is yellow and it's labeled gold Marie. So my first year growing pole beans, other than I've grown scarlet runner beans, just more for the flowers and the beans. So hopefully I get good protection off of them. I did pop some zinnias in here when the beans were small. There's some zinnias in the, the teepees see them poking out so if you see some odd flowers and you say hey those aren't beans no there's zinnias and then when I was planting peas I tried doing um, peas with doing a, an inoculant uh, a soak with some inoculant first this year never done that before but then I had beans left over that had been soaked 
and uh, inoculated, so I needed to plant them. So I just popped them in along the front of here, and uh, I don't know if they'll do anything. It's a little bit uh, shady, and I'm trying to keep them from taking over the bean trellis, so I come back here almost every day. I have to pull them off. I seem to have learned they're not going up the trellis today, but uh, we'll see if I get anything off of them. You may have also noticed through most of these beds, random dill plants, they just seed themselves. I, I never purposely grow like plant dill. It just, I let it self seed wherever. I love the smell of it as I brush by it in the garden. The uh, caterpillars and butterflies love dill. And um, then I always have some for making dips and pickles and things. So it's always lots of uh, dill in supply here. And we have one more bed in this uh, main garden. So this is my uh, brassica bed. Uh, you may have seen an earlier video, I think a week ago, where I replanted this whole bed. So it's a little bit late getting going, but I had just a massive flea beetle infestation this spring and they just, they wiped out most of my brassicas. So I had to kind of restart, but they're looking good right now. We just went through, like I said, a week of in the mid to high 30s um, and uh, they survived that. I have, you may have noticed an umbrella here behind me. I had that sitting here and I also had some lawn chairs sitting here to kind of just cast some shade in the afternoon for some of those days. The wind was too high other days so I just couldn't. They're always netted and I think that provides a bit of shade as well. I'm making sure to give them extra water so their roots are staying nice and cool and uh, so far, things look good. Um, if I can get them through this heat and keep growing through this heat, as long as it cools down when they start to flower, then um, I think I should be okay. Uh, I think that's when it's most critical not to be too hot, but we'll find out, I guess. And there's broccoli along this front area. There's cabbage down the center. There's cauliflower at the back. Um, several varieties of each. Um, there's a little bit of pak choy in the front and a couple of Brussels sprouts plants at the back. So hopefully something in here does well. Again, you can see I have the grass clippings on here and uh, it really helps to, to keep the roots cool. And I can't remember if I mentioned, I have some onions. I think this is a red onion that I just, was just still sitting, you know, a week ago or so, just sitting still from my planting uh, this winter and they just really need to get planted out. So I just pop them in here and uh, we'll see what comes of them. So let's get these covered up before the uh, cabbage loopers figure out they're open. The sticky cards are in there. Um, if you missed that other video, just to try and catch any remaining flea beetles. They've caught a lot of flies and mosquitoes and they have caught a few flea beetles. Um, but with the netting on, I'm not too worried about them harming any um, too many beneficials. There's not not a lot getting in here. I think anything that they caught was already in here. So so that's my main garden space. Um, this is the area that I started out with. Uh, when we first moved into this yard and I started gardening in this this yard. Um, it's approximately 20 by 25 feet um, and all but the very end beds are um, four feet by eight feet. So I have six four foot by eight feet foot beds and then along the back fence they're two feet deep and uh, that's about about uh, 19 feet long there of, of bed space, but there's some boards running through, runs it down to about 18 feet in the end. Um, and then the, uh, the strawberries and uh, rhubarb are just kind of added on the side there. So that's that growing space and it provides me with a lot of, a lot of production. Sorry, there's a squirrel going down the fence. It's got my attention. And now I have this space. So I've been 
slowly expanding on this space um, for the last couple of years. This used to be where my children had a swing set and slide and all that fun stuff, trampoline, you know, kid stuff. But uh, they're grown now and they, they don't require any of those, those toys. And so I kept looking at this space thinking, I could grow more vegetables. So I started with adding some large pots a couple of years ago. Um, last fall I built a, a raised planter in behind me here. I've made some um, fabric grow pots and uh, I purchased this spring some fabric raised beds. I've also added, I'm not sure it's in the view, but uh, a small kind of plastic covered kind of cold frame greenhouse type type thing um, that I can grow a few things in there and it helps to me to extend the season by offering me just that little bit of shelter early on. Um, so I have a lot going on over here and this space has grown to be just about as full I think as as the other space. So let's see what I have growing here. So starting with these fabric raised beds, um, you may have seen a few videos with these uh, this spring, I, I filled this one that I'm standing by right now in a video just to get it set up and going. And later on, I planted it full of beans. Now I had um, a temporary cold frame hoop house kind of thing over it, um, but I've since removed that. The beans don't need it anymore. And um, so what I have in here is this, this raised bed is divided into eight pockets, or approximately 18 inches by 18 inches of kind of squares. And I have, I believe, three squares that are with a burgundy bush bean, three have a black turtle bean, and then two have um, a yellow wax bean in them. So these are the, the black turtle, these are the yellow wax, and then the burgundy are over there. So the beans are growing, they're filling in quite strong. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with these raised beds. It's not the bed's fault, it's I'm trying to figure out how to hook up um, my weeping drip system. And I think it's just too long of a run. So I've had to, to supplement them with water a little bit just because the water isn't, isn't doing a, a full coverage job in here. Um, but other than that, they've been working out really well. I will need to top them up. The soil has settled down quite a bit from when I filled them, but that's to be expected. Um, so I'll top them up once I harvest here and uh, get them ready for next year. But the, the burgundy beans are just, just in the last couple of days starting to bloom. And uh, actually I can see one tiny little flower bud just starting on a black turtle bean here. So it won't be long before I have beans uh, starting to, to form on this this pile and I'll be harvesting beans. I love bush beans because as long as you keep harvesting them, I find in my climate here, um, I don't know if I've mentioned I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, so you know we have generally usually a, a cooler cooler climate um, compared to some places. Once once I uh, start harvesting my be my bush beans and I as long as I keep picking them, they'll usually keep going for me for quite a while. Um, right up till frost if I let them, but they do start to, to peter out and I get bored of picking beans, so I usually wind up pulling them before then, but they do really well here. This is my other fabric raised bed, and I have it planted up with a variety of things. So um, I have, if you saw in one of my videos, I planted out um, some small onions that I had overwintered and forgot to use, while they're very small, like set size. Um, and they're starting to sprout so I just planted them hoping to get seed and it looks like that's going to work for me. So I have um, Superstar White and Candy Yellow and the Candy Yellow are just starting to form seed heads but the Superstar White are really really going to town here so I should definitely get seed from those. And then there are a few small, just perennial green onions in behind there. Then I have, I tried to plant some turnip. I don't know, I just have not been able to grow turnips in this garden. I don't, I used to grow turnip. I can't here. I have some radish I kind of forgot about over here because I had some somewhere else and they're not looking, they didn't really do anything, so. 
I think I could just pull these and be planting something else in this space. There's no turnips on these. Then I have some purple Vienna kohlrabi and white, I'm not sure, white globe. Can't remember, but there's a white kohlrabi and a purple kohlrabi. And uh, they're growing lots of leaves and stems, so hopefully I get some kohlrabi off of them. A little bit further down here, I have beets. Um, actually, I've replaced some of the beets with pak choy. Uh, it's doing barely any better than those beets were doing. And then I have my fresh pack beets. These are the beets I use um, when I want to add beets for salads and things. Uh, the leaves are really nice. They don't produce a very nice beet, but the leaves are great for that. Um, and I'm finding over in this bed, I see here I have a little bit of leaf miner, but that's the first I've seen over here. Oh, there's one here too. So leaf miner is just, uh, I don't even know what the insect is that lays their larva in the leaf here and they, they live inside the leaf. This actually might, I think that's leaf miner. So the larvae live inside here and they make a mess of the leaves. But um, very little of it here compared to when I used to have it in my other bed, so. Those couple of leaves out and get rid of them. But anyway, so I have the fresh pack and I have um, red ace down here, just a few growing. And then I have golden Detroit. I've never grown these before. They're looking, I don't know. I'm not sure what I think of these yet. I'll have to cook one up and try it. I haven't had any yet. That's the Golden Detroit. Then I have a variety of lettuces here. Um, this red one. Starting to, to go over, so I'll have to get rid of it. It's an oak leaf. And I had a whole pile of spinach here. Um, it was Escalade spinach. Normally doesn't uh, bolt too hard for me, but this year we've had a lot of up and down weather and I think that's maybe what caused it to bolt and so I've ripped that out and I need to get in there and plant something else. I also have this mixed pot of kale here. Um, it was red Russian dinosaur and dwarf green, I believe. I planted this very early on in my cold frame and uh, the red Russian just didn't do well. The rest have been attacked by Flea beetles, you can see some on there right now. Um, but uh, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll get a few decent leaves off of here, but I don't know. The flea beetles this year are just atrocious. So, not much to, to write home about with that, but we all have those, those things in our gardens. Next to the fabric raised pots, I have potatoes. In, uh, in fabric pots that I've made here. So there's the, the pot they're in. I don't know, must be close to five gallon pot. Um, this is French fingerling right here. And it's just starting to, to want to put a blossom out. Then I have green, green mountain. They're not looking quite as good, but they're coming and they are blooming. Then there's some Bincy and I can't remember. Oh, Viking at the end there. So there's two potatoes in each of these pots and uh, they're coming along. So I think they'll do all right. They're starting to flower. A few more potato pots just over there. So let's go have a look. So these are the same same type thing with these potato pots. So there's four here as well. I have sangre right here, road esterling, Norland, and amarosa right at the very end there. If you can see. So 
They're doing all right. Again, two potatoes per pot here. And I have a few more potatoes right here. These are Norland. Um, and you may have seen this just an experiment. This pot is only, I don't know, six, maybe eight inches tall. And it's just a bit of an experiment with some extra seed potatoes that I had. And I just packed, I think there's five or six potatoes in there and we'll just see. And you might be able to see there's, I might have, must have dropped some peas. There's a few peas coming up in there as well. But uh, so far they're growing well and, and looking healthy, but uh, we'll see, see where that goes with those. The real stars of the garden this year for me are my uh, big pots that I planted up with mainly peppers. There are a few other things, nasturtiums, a few odd cherry tomatoes that had nowhere to go. One pot has um, eggplant in it and uh, there's some peas and cumin and, and uh, cor coriander, parsley. I can't even remember. There's a few herbs in here as well, but basil. But uh, really, the peppers. I'm just going to take you around and you just admire the peppers because that's what I do. And I know it's kind of, I feel like I'm showing off a little here. And uh, I know a lot of you can grow a lot nicer peppers, but in my climate, wow. I am really happy with my peppers this year. This is Antoli Romanian. There's another one over here. This plant. Uh, has some flowers. It's not producing any fruit yet. These are my sweet bananas. I can't really get you in here. Sweet bananas. I've been eating some of these already. There's tons of them in here. Another one back there. More down there. They're just everywhere. Everywhere you look more. They're doing really well. There's another plant over there. I don't know if you can see. Load it up over there as well. These are my mini bells. In the front over here. If you can see that little one right there. So they're just just starting. I'm trying to focus here. They're just starting to produce fruit on the mini bells. There's some peas around here to try and work through. Oh, and nasturtiums. And then here's my sweet lipstick down in there. Lots on there. And these are the ones I tried in that one video, and there was one little kind of round one. Um, had some heat, so I don't know. They just start off way more round, I don't remember. But I took it off the other plant, so I'm not sure yet. It was just an early, really small sweet lipstick that just hadn't grown elongated yet. Or if there's a little bit of a different variety, because they were from Save Seed. These are my California Wonder over here. One nice big one there. I've already had one. There's another one right up there just coming. And a little one. There's another one up here. So the King of the North and California Wonder are going head to head this year to see what's the best pepper. And just like last year, the California Wonder seemed to take the lead, but then last year the King of the North caught up and uh, produced a lot of nice peppers as well. So we'll see, they're loaded with flowers. This is the King of the North now. Loaded with flowers. It's been so hot, I doubt any of them pollinated, but not, not a single pepper on the King of the North yet, but good healthy looking plants. So I'd like to be able to just pick one, and just grow one, either King of the North or uh, California Wonder. There's my jalapenos. Hopefully you can see in there. 
This little plant is pretty loaded up. And there's more in here, more up there. Another little one coming. Nasturtiums, nasturtiums. Another pepper there. This one's not doing much, but it does have the nasturtiums in front of it. This is called Early Prolific. I've never grown this before, and um, it seems to be neither early nor prolific, but it does have a pepper on it. Um, so we'll see, we'll keep waiting. It's still early. It's just the beginning of June or July right now. This gorgeous, gorgeous nasturtium flower right here. And then I have candy cane peppers. I get the nasturtium out of the way. So three on that plant. There's one main one. So one back there and behind it. Another one right there. And then another candy cane plant with a pepper on it. I think there's just the one on that plant. Still looking good. This variegation on the leaf is supposed to be there. That's part of the candy cane features. Really seeing it on this one. And then I have my mystery sweet anum seeds. So this was just a pack of cheap seeds that were swept off the, the floor or the packing room, I guess, when they from the company when they produce the seeds. So I have one. I've had one of these already. It was probably the best pepper I've ever had. Just a nice, sweet, thick skin bell pepper. It had, um, I did a lot of pruning in here on the tomato and I used to have the potato pots sitting in here. And I think they were protecting the pepper because that one that I picked was actually sun scorched. Um, it was getting scalded, so I pulled it off, but I still ate most of it, and it was absolutely delicious. And there's two more of those just mystery plants, and they're, they have lots of flowers on them. But again, in this heat, I don't know if any of them have actually been pollinated. Um, but uh, they're looking like strong, healthy plants. Then I have my Sugar Rush Peach. Now, the peppers in this last pot, I started very, very early in February, I believe. So these two types of peppers are a little bit more ahead, but boy, they're just loaded, loaded with peppers. I don't know if you can see back in there, like just peppers everywhere. The Sugar Rush Peach is nice, has an interesting texture. Um, so. Well, you can see how lumpy and bumpy it is, but um, hopefully some of these mature and I can get to try them out. There's one here that's looking, it's starting to kind of maybe change color a tiny, tiny bit. They're supposed to take a very long time. That's why I started them so early. It's just loaded, just loaded with peppers in there. And then there's my Hungarian hot wax. Again, started this one really early. And I've been eating off of this plant for a while already. Some of them, I don't know how well it's showing up in the camera here, but some are starting to, to lose that kind of immature yellow and start to kind of darken. But um, just tons of them on the plant and they're looking really good. My eggplant, I have a few eggplants coming along here. This I believe is the Black Beauty. And then I have a Violetta here, spiny. I don't know if you can see that down way in the bottom there. There's one Violetta there. It looks like it's grown underneath my trellis. So. I'll be picking that one soon. And then I have peppers in pots because I had a few extras. So I have peppers in pots. So all the same varieties, just in some small pots. There's the uh, candy cane. Uh, 
this is early prolific and this one is doing better than the one in the large pot sorry the sun's kind of changing here uh, this is my Hungarian hot wax and this one just has one one little pepper on it my jalapeno really strong lots of branching lots of flowers no no uh, fruit yet on that sweet lipstick one pepper that's looking pretty good uh, sweet banana is this one is loaded as well it's the the year for the sweet banana pepper because I think there's five on here four maybe uh, this is the uh, this is the sugar rush peach lots on here again lots on the sugar rush peach and then this is the Antoi Romanian and I have a couple whoops a couple of very nice peppers coming along here very nice Okay, so this is the raised uh, wooden planter box that I made last fall. I didn't do a video or anything on it. It was just kind of a throw together project. Um, but uh, I've put a ring of peas around the outside edge and I've had people question, what are those plants? They're dangling there. They look like they need a trellis. Yeah, they're peas. Yeah, they could be trellis, but they're okay to dangle over the edges. And uh, that was kind of the look I wanted. I did put a trellis up the back here just so these were getting sun because if they're whoops if they're hanging in the back I thought they might not get enough sun but uh, they're growing and producing fine I've been picking picking peas off of them and uh, enjoying these as well down the center I have three kinds of carrots there's a row of little finger a row of Danvers half long and a row of Adelaide so um, hopefully I get some carrots out of here. It's not a super deep bed, so it was kind of an experiment to put the carrots. I'm thinking the Danvers half long will be all right. The rest I'm not sure about. But um, these peas have taken off and they're producing as much if not more than the peas I planted months before them. They're getting a lot more sun um, and they're probably a lot warmer. So that's probably what's uh, pushing them along that much faster. I'm going to bring you on one more quick stop before we end this tour. I know it's gotten quite long, um, but people have been wanting to see a full tour of my vegetable garden. So hopefully you've made it this far. This is my cold frame greenhouse area. It's probably a lot different than the last time you saw it. Uh, so I just have a couple of tomato plants. They were just kind of leftover hangers on and I pop them in here and then hopefully if we get a really cold, um, you know, early cold weather, I can get a few extra tomatoes. It doesn't, this structure doesn't keep it warmer, but it does overnight, but it does kind of protect um, from the frost and that. So sometimes I can keep things a little bit longer. So I just have a, an orange monarch cherry. Um, this is a black crim. This is just out of a cherry mix. So I'm not sure what it'll wind up being. And I believe this is a Manitoba down here. Yeah, so a Manitoba. And most of them have fruit on them. So that's nice to see. Just sneak you in a little bit further. I have over here is um, where I had more seed potato left over. These were some real little, little guys, like maybe that big, maybe that big. So I've just potted them up. And I'm thinking once the garlic comes out, I'll pop them in that bed. And then I have a random ground cherry right here. Um, I've already potted one up and I just haven't decided what I'm doing with that one. And then I have some Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. Um, I think there's some, I think there's some cabbage and broccoli there as well. Yeah. So those are just extra starts that didn't fit in, um, when I replanted the bed and I thought I would just save them to the side just in case I need to do more replanting 
or maybe I'll have a space in a bed that comes open that I could pop some of those in. We'll just see what happens. Um, they seem to be growing fine here right now. I potted them up into a little bit bigger pots for now and um, I can keep doing that if I need to. So that's my garden. Um, that's the, what is it today? The 6th? It's the 6th of July to today. And uh, I think things are doing really well. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't like to do these, these big tour videos too much just because I find they get really long. Um, and I know as gardeners, we all want to be out in the garden in our spare time and, uh, and working on our yards and such. So hopefully you stuck around to the end and you were able to, to see the parts that you wanted to see. And uh, thanks for, for sticking with me. Um, the sun has come out since I started this. I think the temperature has gone up at least five degrees and uh, it's getting hot. So I'm going to take this small little harvest that I collected as I was going here, a couple beets, a carrot, some celery, and I think I'm going to head inside, put on a more summery outfit, and, uh, and uh, get this edited up so I can get it out to you. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.